question on software on software patenting. So not to uh, make it further ado, I will start with my presentation. I, I hope that you can all clearly see my screen. Good, I can see Monica nodding, great. So as you probably know, um, software patenting is um, most of the lawyers, especially the patent ones, would say that these two words cannot go together. And you will see in um, my uh, uh, lecture what, what is the reasoning behind. We'll just go back to basics. I know that most of you are probably aware of, of the differences, but let's uh, repeat the basics. Uh, as you probably know, when we talk about, and, and these are these are basically everything that you see here is legal terminology, and everything is um, uh, aligned and more or less correlated with European Patent Office. So everything that you can see here in this presentation is basically uh, the same vocabulary, the same context that that, that you will probably encounter or any other pages you would Google when you basically Google uh, software patenting. So I uh, uh, intentionally made it so, so that uh, in this intro lecture, you become aware of, uh, let's say, collocations and the definitions that are usually uh, used in this field uh, of work when it comes to software patenting. So as I said before, Digital technology has been basically part of our everyday life, and many of us are ba basically working in this in industry, either supporting or developing new products and services. Hardware, uh, as it is, is basically just a physical component of the uh, uh, of your product or service, and usually it relates to uh, processor chips or digital me memory that is placed in inside of your computer or any other external devices, I don't know, uh, some um, external, uh, uh, um, let's say, things like, I would say, mic, uh, headset, uh, smart card reader, um, uh, some kind of uh, antenna, so whatever, would help you to, to go through your uh, uh, process and provide the service and, and product that you are offering to your users. Software, on the other hand, is basically, I would say, handbook uh, that uh, uh, helps your hardware running, but while it provides the instructions and protocols, basically it's um, like in culinary world, uh, you have a recipe and you definitely need your recipe in order to be able to, to, to follow the good chef's uh, uh, um, dishes at the end, uh, uh, compared to the situation when you are just doing the, the let's say, researching kitchen. So remember that, and you probably are aware of it, that without software, hardware is useless, but without hardware, software cannot perform. Having said that, we'll just go more deep into the world of intellectual property uh, uh, rights. You all heard about copyright. Copyright is something that basically each um, individual person or the company, and this is something that we will reflect further on, can create. Uh, it can be in any field of human um, activity. Usually we know that people who write books, who do scientific research, who basically play or create music or paint or um, write poems or write code, because code is literally so, uh, uh, basically a mode of uh, uh, um, artistic uh, work is protected just by the fact that it's created as product of individual who has um, certain talents and is expressing himself through the mode of that, let's say, art piece, uh, software code, poem, uh, uh, scientific research, or similar things. So basically, uh, when we have a situation where there is an individual author who is uh, producing certain uh, uh, work, if such uh, work can be diagnosed and 
identified as any of the um, works that are protected by the respective uh, intellectual property rights of the respective jurisdiction, basically you fall within the same scope. Please bear in mind that for the EU countries, more or less, we have the same acquis communitaire meaning that the legal background and the regulation in the, every country that is part of the uh, EU, meaning the member state countries, has the same regulation of intellectual property rights. Maybe they are not written in the same way because more or less they are regulated through directives and uh, implementing through national legislation, but nevertheless, they should be at the, in the end results having the same circumstances. Uh, when it comes to the rest of the world, more or less the practices correlate, especially when you go to Western countries um, that are part of Western civilization, like uh, North America, Australia, New Zealand, uh, they are more or less using the same con legal concept uh, behind definitions that you also encounter in Europe. So when you say the copy, when you say copyright, more or less it means the same in America, in Europe, or Australia. You can't say that it's like that in other part parts of the world. So Asia and China, India can differ from that because there is no universal definition of copyright but nevertheless um, my job uh, and my task today is just to make it aware of it and please bear in mind or put a note somewhere that depending on your um, uh, country of origin the place where your products and services are being developed and your uh, target audience whatever you will be globally providing your products and services, you have to be aware of the differences that may arise from respective legislation. So my recommendation is always to do the research or get on board the, the professional who will be able to provide you with the, uh, correct information that are accurate and that will help you to uh, mitigate all risks that might occur if you do not know what is basically going on in the country where you are either developing or producing or providing your services and products. So as I said, uh, software being, uh, let's say, a literary work is, especially in the field of EU, protected per se. So no additional protection is required. No registration process, no um, additional filing or anything uh, is required, just uh, the mere act of uh, uh, producing the final piece of work, you have protection coming arising from the law itself. However, when it comes to ownership of software, the situation is not that simple, because in most cases the author is individual person. And usually, if such individual person is not employed with any, with any country, company, such uh, uh, software, being a literary work, is basically uh, his own property, and he has different rights to use, to sell it, reuse it, uh, uh, and similar, arising from that fact. In case that he is employee, meaning author of the company, he might have some, let's say, restrictions, meaning that he won't be a uh, author in, in full capacity, and he uh, basically can un or might, under the employment agreement, enable his employer, because it's a product of his uh, employment, to use all the material benefits of his art of his uh, uh, copyright over the software. So this is something that, uh, especially if you are individual or you are starting a company or you are part of an uh, institution, you should be aware of and you should definitely dig and see what is your personal current situation and what could be situation for the startup company you want to uh, incorporate or establish. Because more or less, uh, investors are always trying to see where the IP is IP including copyright. IP is just a generic word for uh, intellectual property. 
and copyright is just one of the, the nodes uh, intellectual property has, you have to basically be aware that IP should be with the company, or in some cases it can be with the individual, but nevertheless there should be some kind of license agreement or something similar that enables the company to use the, the uh, copyright over the software uh, in, in a legal way, and, and such document has to be in writing. So just, like, as I said before, just take a note or make a mental note that this has to be sorted out. Next thing that we are going to cover is patents. Patents are basically something that, as I said, for software are more or less covered by, let's say, similar uh, span of legislation. Nevertheless, there are some more specific uh, special uh, um, laws that are covering patent. Especially in Croatia, we have, like, for example, a special law on patent. And um, there are certain uh, minimum requirements that each invention has to, uh, let's say, tick the box in order to be able to say that it can be patented. So not only that it has to be in a field of technology, but also has to be new, has to have this uh, innovative uh, element and has to be basically um, applicable in a certain way. Um, the thing is that more or less, everybody, who is to judge whether something is patentable or not? Basically, um, in any country uh, all over the world, especially in, as I said, let's say in Western uh, uh, circle of countries, you have so-called patent uh, representatives. And they are basically consultants person who are licensed to give you advice and to support you through the patent registration. Uh, also, uh, by, uh, institutions like European Patent Office are also providing services and also a lot of information of, uh, just to see initially whether your invention can fall within the scope of patent. And also they if the if the 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 um, let's say uh, the question in hand is too specific too complicated they also provide a list of experts you can use that will help you uh, write down the patent uh, application that will help you with uh, supporting the whole project process uh, also when it uh, just to mention for those of you coming to Croatia I believe the same goes for Slovenia there, there is the intellectual vlasništvo. so basically it's institution that also provides the same level of services and you can always revert to them most of their services are informative and advisory and they are basically free, free of charge if you want to use them as they are let's say patent representative or if you want to use them for the search of existing patents or similar things, they, they have uh, certain fares, some fees that have to be um, settled. Uh, but nevertheless, those uh, fees and fares are not that high. What is costly in that process is basically the whole process, process of patent registration. That process is uh, basically uh, something that will take a uh, quite number of your days, I would say months or even years. And it's a process that it won't be depending on how many countries, uh, member states of EU or even further you want to cover, it will take longer. And also the, the calculation of the fees that shall be incurred in such process basically will depend on those variables and please be aware that all the fees are not uh, to be settled up front because they uh, differ in different they uh, are basically different in different stages of the process and are coming uh, and they have different maturity but nevertheless good patent representative consultant will do the calculation and you will be able to to calculate your cash flows so after giving you a small uh, uh, intro in the world of patenting, how to go with the process, uh, we can go back to the concept of patent. And as we said, and this is something that you should 
remember that um, it's really not easy to say what is uh, patent and what is not patent. The thing is that uh, just abstract concept or idea cannot be patented uh, because they do not qualify as invention and no implementation of abstract concept or idea through conventional hardware will be recognized as patent. We'll, when we go further through the lecture, I will show you some examples of, this, uh, of the patenting. Nevertheless, um, as we said before, patents can protect, as it's written here, novel and inventive products. And such, uh, the, the key thing is that uh, the part that is being protected, it's not actually the software itself, because as we said in the beginning, software is basically protected by copyright, just per se, no special registration is required. But nevertheless, the compute, uh, computer implemented invention, basically the way such so software works together with the existing uh, uh, technology, with the existing software, is something that um, can be patented. And this is the reason that I said at the beginning of the lecture that software patenting, patenting in a way is not possible because software is not being patented, the patent itself is being patented. I, I know that is confusing, but nevertheless, the software is protected by copyright, but the way the software interacts with hardware, hardware, so this is the part that we have this word, computer implemented invention, is being patented. Because the way the software works with hardware, uh, within the existing or the new technology is so innovative that can be protected through patent. I hope that <laughs> I hope that you can uh, get some grasp. I think that Monica will share with you this uh, uh, presentation afterwards because at the beginning it's a little bit confusing, but basically it, it, it's uh, it's not that confusing. That's why I put here the photo of the smartphone because smartphone has exactly uh, great distributions of patents together with copyright that is already in there. So basically the way uh, your software is working on the smartphone can be protected with a, a patent, but already the smartphone itself has number of things that can be per se protected by patent. Things like, as we said before, chips, receivers, transmitters, batteries, uh, I don't know, some external devices like the new, I think the Galaxy Samsung has this new pen that basically enables you to write down and then you have exactly uh, your hand uh, writing turned into the, the, the text or voice, speech even. So I think this is, this is something that uh, definitely uh, uh, is a good example of uh, how software works with hardware and its computer implemented invention and basically is patentable. The reason that we want things to be patented is not just that, uh, that we want to have them protected. It's also the reason that this is preconditioned to have clear situation on who is going to get the financial rewards, who is going to get the benefits from your patent, for your invention. And this is the reason that you have to, uh, uh, when you are in that stage, when your product service is that mature, that you basically have to register for patent. Of course, you have to have adequate cash flow to be able to pay the fees and, uh, of the registration uh, of the patent, but nevertheless, you should definitely go for it. I have a good friend of mine, colleague, Mladen Vukmir, who is a renowned uh, intellectual property rights lawyer, and his office is well known, not just in Croatia, but I would say globally. He's also president of the um, uh, uh, one of the biggest organizations on intellectual property rights, and we do a lot of mentoring together with startups, usually. I love to listen to him because he has this um, really reasonable, reasonable approach. He always says that uh, maybe you aren't able to protect all of your um, intellectual properties uh, 
at the moment when you are just starting your business or incorporating or just having the first customers. But nevertheless, you can have your strategy. So you can align your strategy with your cash flow. So gradually you will be able to put on your uh, balance sheet among your assets all of your IP. In some cases, you are not able to, to protect them at the very beginning because you lack funds or knowledge to do that. But gradually, by uh, investigating, learning, researching, together with uh, having a good cash flow or grants that are supposed to help you with it, you will be in a position to do that. So my advice is basically just repeating Mladen uh, Vukmir advice, do your strategy regarding your IP and gradually work on protection of all of your IP rights, not just patents, but all others that might occur in your business. So we'll go further with uh, my presentation. So um, as we said before, this is just like a uh, cheat sheet. Um, does, uh, doesn't copyright protect software. And basically, as we said before, if you have uh, original source code or object code, they are protected as copyright because they are uh, something that are uh, considered as a literate uh, work of the author and they fall on within the same uh, um, great uh, group of protected goods as any novel or any poem or any, uh, I don't know, um, paint would, uh, famous paint would fall in. However, underlying technical concept itself, it's not protected by copyright. And this is where patent comes in place. But not the software is going to be protected, but the way the software interacts with hardware and providing that it is, in, it, it is innovative and that it presents invention that can be patentable. Um, I would say that uh, this is basically just repeating the, the things that we already said. I, I Please stop me if it is too much or if you have any questions, because all questions are more than welcome. Or we can just go further and then see when it comes to the end, and then you can ask questions at the end. Whatever suits you. Mariana, you can proceed with your presentation, okay. and then we will have short Q and A after your presentation. Okay, good. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So basically, as I said before, uh, maybe just to wrap up at the end of this slide, because I think this is the most important thing that copyright and patents serve as complementary tools for inventors if there is computer uh, implemented innovation and at the end the end result should be that all of your uh, intellectual property rights are protecting and are able to produce financial gains for you and will provide you the competitive advantage meaning that your ip is protected and you are able to ripe uh, financial benefits out of it please uh, beware as I said before, the difference of software and patent, and that if we have patent, that all those requirements have to be fulfilled in order to be able to know that it's patentable. As I said before, you should always use for um, uh, advice from an expert. If you are not in a position to, uh, to get the professionals to pay them, you can always use the public open uh, uh, sources like institutions, one we have in Croatia or European or patent office or in your respective countries, because their job is basically raising awareness on the uh, all IP, including patent, and basically making people aware all the man on all man uh, monetary benefits such uh, assets are bringing to uh, companies and individuals that are basically inventing themselves. And also, they're also a great sign of how um, respective country is uh, economically advanced, how sophisticated uh, the techniques, uh, products and services uh, of such country uh, uh, are and whether it is on the i would say on early curve as one of the leaders of the new technologies or is basically lagging behind and it's on the uh, 
uh, exiting part of the development curve. Um, I prepared for you some examples of software patenting. So you, as you can see here, uh, something that can be patentable are things like method of improving curved images in computer graphic displays, or using a word processor to assemble text in Chinese characters in a new way, or software that enables the automatic generation of computers computerized user interface to collect evidence from a candidate to allow assessment for recognition of prior learning. I can't say that this by heart because it's really complex and sophisticated. That's why I'm reading it out. But nevertheless, uh, do not be, um, let's say, do, do not give up as I do your research and see whether your software and the interaction it provides with hardware can be patentable. Here you can see examples of non patentable software, things like algorithm being a formula to create software, while an algorithm itself is not patentable. If it applies to be a defined purpose, it may amount to a manner of manufacture or a generation of storage of data in a computer that does not create an artificial state of affairs or a physical effect. So I would say that just um, writing down a simple line of code that has no interaction with uh, your existing uh, hardware or any other hardware that you want to introduce would definitely not be um, considered as invention that can be patentable. Uh, I also wanted to, ch to share with you some examples of computer implemented innovations and their inventors. These are all people that basically got inventors uh, awards by European uh, Patent uh, uh, Office. You can go to APO pages and just when, to get a grasp what can be patentable and not, and in what industries usually the, the, the patents are being granted. There is a great distribution on uh, each country that is part of a APO territory. There is also um, really a great story about each of those inventors who basically um, have been awarded a, globe, uh, a yearly award. And also there is a great story of each on um, their patents. So you can uh, easily see what is so innovative in their invention, why the way in, in, that it interacts with the computer, with the hardware is so different that it, it can be patentable. Uh, as I said before, I will share with you my uh, presentation and uh, all the links in the presentation leads to the story so that we basically don't have to uh, grow, uh, go to through uh, each of these uh, cases separately. But as I said before, uh, you can just see that the first uh, uh, gentleman here basically did, uh, took a convenient, uh, took regular audio streaming, and he did it in a way that is, let's say, uniquely different to the one that was used before. You can read it out in his, uh, I am not expert in that field, but the way he did his magic made the compression work better, and the effects were such that such um, invention could be patentable. Uh, these two gentlemen that uh, are a team of Belgian and French work as cryptographers and did this double key smart card that enabled the process of the existing uh, smart cards uh, more secure. And you can see that their invention has been uh, implemented in many different industries. Also, um, this is something that is, I would say, more uh, easy to comprehend because it's not just software, but it's also the hardware that uh, works better because there is a software and this is exactly the innovation when you have iLimp hand, because the, 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 the gentleman that helped uh, improve the existing solution helped that the, the limb, the artificial limb that was uh, already existing was more accurate, more, um, uh, let's say, precise in the micro uh, movements the, the uh, robotic hand was making. So just the software that he uh, implemented with his computer, with the hardware, 
in this case it was a lamp, artificial lamp, made uh, uh, his invention so different and so innovative that it was patentable. And as I said before, these are all people that got designers uh, uh, awards for their patents on the annual basis. Just uh, to wrap up, uh, all these things can be easily Googled uh, on the uh, European Patent Office uh, pages. As you can see, at this very moment, we have more than 44 countries all over the globe, mo mostly they are Europeans, who are part of the EPO. And you can go to their websites, you can dig the existing patents, you can dig the lists of um, experts that can help you with a specific uh, uh, issue you have, or even uh, uh, get some clarification on anything that may appear in your process. But nevertheless, um, do not give up on patenting or uh, just because you don't have enough information or you don't have enough fees, because there are many different grants that are basically being given and granted to young inventors. And especially if uh, you are not able to do it uh, in the initial stage, do, uh, uh, let's say, do have a strategy and do, do, uh, do let's say, put it on your to-do list once the cash flow improves that you are also able to do your uh, uh, patent registration and uh, also gain all the, the financial uh, awards that come with that uh, fact. So more or less, I'm coming to the end of my uh, uh, presentation. I hope that it was useful and I'm open to every questions that you might have. Monica. Thank you very much, Mariana. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Somebody is raising a hand. <laughs> Yes, yes, I have a question. Please. Um, actually, it's more a curiosity, if I can call it this way. So we all know that in the software industry, in the coding activity, actually, time is uh, critical, let's say, because the industry is moving very fast forward. And if you do not hurry to patent your uh, invention, your code, let's say, then you might lose a very important advantage. However, the patenting process is quite difficult and it takes a little bit of more time than the program programmer or the company is uh, willing to to let's say wait so mm -hmm. what is your advice what should that company or what should that person do should it wait and patent its own invention or should it let's say sell it to somebody else and you know give up ip rights I would say that in general, uh, as I said before, the process is long, but nevertheless, just the initiation of the process already gives you, let's say, certain rights. And you are not in a position like, uh, compared to the situation that you did no uh, patent filing. So in a way you are already protected because not completely, but just filing the, 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 the patent uh, uh, asking for registration of your patent uh, in a way protects your invention because the whole story goes that long because what uh, what are they basically doing behind they are searching the, the first days have to see whether it is the invention that is innovative that is uh, 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 making such a shift that can be patentable but also they are uh, investigating whether among the existing portfolio patents, there is similar or equal solution. Because your patent has to be innovative and unique. So the moment when you file for registration, you already are in a process of protection. So my recommendation would be file as soon as possible. And only in case if you can't get any grant or uh, if I would say uh, find somebody who is going to fund your protect uh, your patent protection uh, pro uh, registration process and maybe um, don't give up uh, completely 
of your uh, financial uh, uh, rights, but agree on certain profit sharing. I don't know, certain percentage of uh, uh, revenue stream that that patent is going to bring can uh, basically go to the person that gave it gave the, the initial fees for the registration of patent if uh, I was clear enough. But basically, this is it. So I don't know. I will give you 10% of everything that this patent is going to make if you give me six or 10,000 euro that I need for the patent registration at this moment. And I have another question. So for example, you are a SME, a small yeah. company, and yeah. you just uh, patented um, an invention, let's say a program. Mm -hmm. um, and you have been awarded the patent certificate okay. uh, from the national, let's say, registration office. Yeah. What do you do in case there is an, let's say, international competitor or somebody else from another country that is filing a case against you and is using uh, and is claiming that you are using their invention? Because you might be uh, uh, a good intention, um, a, a person with good intention that has received uh, this certificate. You are not, let's say, guilty of anything. However, the process is against you as a company. Well, you can't stop him from that because everybody is free to sue. But the thing is that they have to prove uh, their uh, accusations. So if you have a patent registration for Slovenia, Croatia, Bulgaria, Romania, uh, I don't know, France territory, it means that you, uh, during your patent registration, uh, not you personally, but the, the institution that you filed with, they did um, their research and they determined that in those territories, nobody else has the same or equal patent. And this is the way, this is the reason they gave you award. When you have this patent registered, as you said, your award, you're being protected in those territories. Nevertheless, if the new competitor is coming from India, for example, and he claims that you took his uh, patent, he has to prove that because he didn't file for protection in all the territories that you are present. Nobody stopped him for doing that in all the territories uh, that you are already in, because if he did that, he would be there and they would say, we can't patent you because somebody already did it. And he omitted his chance. The same applies for you. And this is something that is always, uh, because the fees are rather high, and as you say, SMEs don't have a lot of budgets. I always recommend to everybody just to go to markets where you are going to sell, where your audience is, where your clients is. You can't have global protection. Even the companies like Adidas or, I don't know, pharma companies are really struggling with that. Though they have like budgets of, I don't know, their markup is in, in a two-figure percentage and they still can't fight that. So basically, you decide what are your meeting territories, where your clients will be, and do your protection there. Gradually, you can go to other markets. It may happen that somebody in India already has it. So you can't uh, count on your patent protection in India. So let's say, do a small tweak, be more innovative, but do another patent on, for Indian market of the similar, but not the same product. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Monica? I don't see any hand raised. But thank you, Anna, for your question and your interest. And Mariana, thank you for your presentation and uh, explaining these, um, how to say, challenges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was very interesting. Um, and I think that um, if you don't have anything else to share with us, we can maybe go on and proceed with another presentation on our agenda. I am basically done. As I said before, Monica has my presentation and she can share it with you if you want. But nevertheless, good luck and thank you for your attention. Thank you Bye. very much, Mariana. Bye.